the United States has added more prominent individuals to its sanctions list, and among those on the list are recently sworn ministers. Now, the U.S. reportedly sent a diplomatic note to Zimbabwe's foreign ministry two weeks ago on plans to extend these sanctions. So let's get more details on this. And Farai Mokatuya is live for us in Harare. Farai, what has been the reaction from the government following the U.S. sanctions announcement? Well, Panina, as you quite rightly said, government officials here have been notified that these measures would be extended. Uh, it's become a, a, a routine, if you want to call it that, because, uh, you know, every time at this time of the year, those measures are renewed. Uh, this year, obviously, covering newly appointed ministers, the current president, uh, President Emerson Mnangagwa, former president Robert Mugabe and his wife are also uh, on that list of uh, uh, people who are on those uh, measures, the U.S. measures. But I think uh, the, the response coming out of here, the foreign minister has been quoted as saying, that you know there was no expectation of a major shift uh, or change in stance on uh, the U.S. measures. Uh, they're saying that uh, you know it requires processes uh, that can't happen overnight in order to repeal these sanctions, and also the expectation that uh, a lot of this hinges, uh, a lot of the revision of those sanctions hinges on elections which are due later this year. So if there's to be any shift, then it's expected later in the year. Uh, but the foreign minister also said that uh, you know the re-engagement with the U.S. as well as other international partners is not an event it is a process which Zimbabwe remains committed to despite uh, these measures that have now uh, been extended Penina uh, well for a president Mnangagwa has said turning around the economy is his number one priority the EU on its part has adopted a wait-and-see approach is he likely to make significant steps before the elections Well, I think the president uh, faces uh, that very difficult uh, uh, proposition of trying to make progress, trying to deliver on a lot of promises that he's made to meet the expectations of many Zimbabweans, uh, but uh, uh, there are factors that are out of his control. Of course, the fact that some of the people that he, the, some of the partners that he needs in order to be able to do that are, are adopting this wait-and-see approach, are waiting for these elections to happen, to see how they'll be conducted, and if indeed uh, he will deliver the free, fair, credible, and transparent election that he has promised. But I think what he can do certainly uh, is uh, look at issues that are within his control. And we expect to see that, as we've already seen happening, that he will push through, uh, you know, uh, revising laws that are seen as uh, archaic laws that are seen as a disincentive to investment, uh, indigenization, for instance. We expect to see him continuing to open up the economy to investment, to, uh, to attract foreign investment, to liberalize the foreign currency markets, as we've already seen being done. All that in a bit to try and bring in capital ahead of those elections to bring in investments to see what he can do uh, before that litmus test which is the elections on the political front uh, you know we might see measures to push through uh, you know reforms uh, particularly on the electoral laws alignment of uh, the laws to the Constitution which was passed in 2013 still a number of uh, issues are outstanding there and yet to be aligned uh, and all that might be done ahead of the elections to ensure that uh, even if uh, some people are waiting and sitting on the fence Zimbabwe has done its part, uh, it has done what it can, uh, and is uh, now in a position to be able to capitalize uh, on that unlocking and, and, and the goodwill that is expected uh, if indeed the elections go the way in which President Mnangagwa has promised, Penina. And Farai, the UK government said it was on an aggressive drive to bail out Zimbabwe. Is there anything to show for that statement so far? Well, Penina, all you have to do is look at the fact that uh, in very quick succession, two government ministers from the UK have been to Zimbabwe. The first attended uh, President Mnangagwa's inauguration in November uh, last year. That was the former Minister of African Affairs. His uh, successor, uh, the new Minister on African Affairs, Harriet Baldwin, was in Zimbabwe at the beginning of this month. Uh, and, uh, you know, she met President uh, Mnangagwa. Uh, and, uh, you know, this was her first trip in Africa, uh, her first visit after taking up that appointment in her first trip in Africa to Zimbabwe, perhaps an indication of the status that the UK is giving to Zimbabwe, the importance and significance of this relationship uh, with Zimbabwe. Soon after her visit, we know that there's been a commitment to provide financial support uh, and aid, particularly to civic society organizations, so they are capacitated and able, uh, you know, to participate and ensure that uh, the electoral playing field, that uh, conditions are right uh, for a free, fair uh, and credible election. We hear that about five million pounds 
has been committed to those civic society organizations. So uh, many see that as an indication of the UK saying, look, yes, while we're waiting on those elections, let's at least do what we can to help Zimbabwe to uh, be able to deliver on that election in a manner that we want it to be delivered so that we are able uh, to assist this country. On its own part, uh, you know, we've heard government officials here indicate that Zimbabwe would be willing to, uh, to re-enter and be readmitted into the Commonwealth, which is that uh, grouping of former British colonies. So uh, clearly this is a relationship uh, that had been frosty but is looking uh, to thaw and both parties on both sides are, are wanting to see this engagement accelerated and, and the support going forward, uh, you know, uh, really, um, you know, become tangible. Penina. All right. Farai Mokutea, live for us in Harare. Many thanks, Farai.